Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about Streams API in Java. In the previous session also, we covered some basic functionality of the Streams API of how we can convert a list of numbers into the squares of the numbers of the same list. Today we are going to look at an extension of the same kind of functionality. Let's say you have a requirement where you have a list and you are asked to convert that list into a set and while you convert the list into set, you also have to calculate the square of each number. So instead of just converting the list of numbers into a set, you have to convert the square of those numbers into a set collection. That is our objective. So I'm going to use the same list which I had created in the previous example, which you can see here. I have a numbers list and I've added four elements to it, 10, 20, 30, and 40. And then if I did not have to use stream or if I did not have the option to use stream, this is how the code would look like where you would explicitly create a set of type hash set. And then you will iterate over the numbers list and then you will pick each item of the numbers list and multiply it by itself, hence calculating the square. And then you will be adding those that that result into the destination set. This is what I'm doing here just to show you that different comparison of how do you write it in the classical way. And then in a while we will look at how we can write the same kind of functionality using the streams API. So let's first run this particular approach where I'm adding all the square of all the elements into a set, which is a hash set type. So the order of the set is not guaranteed because I'm using a hash set and then I'm just printing the hash set. So let's try to run this program. So I go to run as Java application and I get the output. And you can see if you look at the list here, the results are not in the same sequence in which the elements were added into the list. It is because of the nature of the hash set, but we do get the result as expected. Now, if I have to write the same kind of functionality uh, using the streams API, then this is how I will write it. I will just uncomment this one and will comment out this one. So now if I look at this new code, it's doing the exact same thing, but in a functional programming approach and using the streams API approach. So I'm again calling dot stream, hence converting the list into a stream, then calling map, which is to use to uh, change the representation of the elements of the collection. So I'm changing the representation from the single number to the square of it, and then calling dot collect, which is a terminal operator where I'm converting this stream into a set by calling collectors dot to set. So to set is the method here, which is going to convert this into a set. And then I'm printing the square set. So let's run this program and observe the output. If I run the program, I get the same output. So I can achieve the same kind of functionality, but much more efficiently using the streams API. So this was an example where I could use the collectors dot to set method to create a, a set out of a list. Now let us move forward to another interesting and very popular functionality, which is filtering. So let me comment this code again so that we don't get multiple outputs. And let me uncomment this code here. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a list of languages, which is an array list. And then I'm adding three elements to this particular array list, which are Java, Python, and Scala. And this is a string of uh, a list of strings here. So I'm adding three strings here. These strings can be anything. I've just taken the example of programming languages here, but this can be anything. So technically we have a list of string objects. And then my task is to get a, a new list out of this existing list, which will have the elements which start with the letter P. Let's say that is your requirement that you have to get only the elements of this list where the name of the element starts with the letter P. If that is your requirement, probably this is how you will be writing the code if you are not using the streams API, where you will create a new list, an empty list basically, and then you will iterate over the old list, which is the languages. So you will iterate over the languages list, and then you will pick the each element of this particular list and check if that string starts with the letter P. If yes, then you will add that particular uh, string element into the new filter list by calling the add method and then you can print that particular list. That is how you will be doing it if you were not using streams. So let's run this program and understand the output. So I'm again going to right click run as Java application 
and the output I get is Python because that is the only string in the list which starts with the letter P. So we get the expected output. Now let's try to write the same code using the streams API. So let me comment this code and I will save the file and let's look at how we can do the same thing in a single line using the streams API. So to use to write the same kind of logic using the stream API, we start with the same kind of syntax where we take languages.stream to convert the list into a stream and then we call a new method called filter. So filter is the method which you will be using whenever you have to write any conditional logic on all the elements of the list. Remember whenever you have to write a filtering or a conditional logic on a particular list, then you will be using the filter method of the streams API. So you will convert the collection into the stream and then you will apply the filter method to apply the condition. This condition can be anything. In this case, the condition is that the elements should start with P. It can be anything. For, for example, it can be based on the string length if you want. If it's a numbers collection, it can be if a number is greater than 100 or not. So any kind of if logic which you might have to run on a particular collection can be run using the filter method. So if we call the filter method and we again follow the same lambda function syntax where we hear this particular S denotes each element one by one and this arrow represents the lambda notation. And then what we want to do that we want to run this condition on each of the element of the stream one by one. And the condition is that the element should start with the letter P. If that is true, then whichever elements satisfy this particular condition will be getting out after this execution. So the block which I've selected, once the filter method has completed its execution, after that, only the elements which have satisfied this filtering condition will be left in the stream. Rest of the elements have been filtered out. So once you have the filtered result, then you can again call the collect method, which is the terminal operator, and you call collectors dot to list, same as the example in covered in the previous session. So I'm running the filtering logic and getting a new list, which will have only the elements which satisfy this condition. So I get the collectors dot to list result back into a new list, which is called filter result. And then I'm printing the filter result. So let's see if we get the same kind of output if we use this logic. Yes, we do get the same kind of output. And this is something which validates how we can use the filter operation seamlessly by applying exactly the same kind of logic which we used to apply by writing this much verbose code. Another benefit is that the streams API are more efficient in using the multi-core processors which are common nowadays on any machine. So this is all I want to cover in today's session. I don't want to elast this session to be even more longer. So we will conclude today's session at this particular point. And in the next session, we are going to have a look at some more functionalities of the stream API, seeing how we can sort the collections, how we can iterate over the collections, because even this code is a bit too much for the, uh, for, for the streams API to iterate over a collection. So we will look at a smarter way of the streams API by which we can iterate over the collection. We will also have a look at how we can sort collections. So that's all for today's session. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please do not forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.